Good afternoon to all of you. My name is Alejandra Platt. And uh, we are living in a world separated by borders at this moment of our life. I call this uh, uh, project, A World Separated by Borders, Un Mundo Separado por Fronteras. I begin this project in, in my mind in September 11, 2001, when I was uh, uh, coming to Tucson that I couldn't cross that day, so I crossed the, the next day. Uh, so I noticed that day, since that day, that the borders between the Republic of Mexico and United Sta States starts a new change. And on my mind began this journey about the borders, about the borders between Sonora, my home, and Arizona, my second home. Okay, okay this is my first photograph uh, <coughs> when I was at the, at the desert. In, in the desert of Arizona. When I, I, when I begin my project, uh, with a, I start uh, uh, walking, doing walkings with a Samaritan humanitarian group because I told her about what I'm doing this project and uh, because I want to learn more about the desert. So this was my first encounter, my f the first object, a uh, child's jacket. It was some kind of difficult to find this object that we call the garbage uh, because it was a child's jacket. But since that day I begin with a project and I continue for the next coming years. Okay, the second, the second photograph is now I began to begin to start the project in Agua Prieta, Sonora, on the border in Mexico. I was with some migrants in Agua Prieta, and this one, this uh, migrant who has a photo tattoo from his child, I asked him, what are you doing here? And he said, well, I was repatriated, and now I'm preparing to continue my journey again to the United States to to be with his daughter. Nogales. In Nogales, there's a, this group called No More Death, No Mas Muertes. And Juan Carlos Diaz is the guy who, is the man who take care of the people, the repatriated migrants in this facility. I was this day with, uh, with Juan Carlos and his son was repatriated from Phoenix. And I asked him, what are you doing here? And he said, well, I decided to stay here with my father because I want to help him to take care of the migrants who come from, from the United States and stay in Nogales. Okay, this is uh, uh, the human, uh, another uh, lady, uh, Bravo Castro. She was in this uh, uh, place in a comedor she was repatriated uh, and she's still having that little thing that they put it when they are on, the, on, the, on these places that we call uh, federal facilities for migrants. She was trying to call to United States to some place to find her children for, uh, uh, because she wants to bring them back to Mexico. She doesn't want to return to United States and she wants to reunite all his family back in Mexico. Comedor Quino. This is another facility from uh, both countries, uh, United States and Mexico, Sonora and Arizona. This place, they give food to the migrants who are repatriated and or decided to return to Mexico. They, are, uh, they receive f a lot of uh, funds from many people, also from different uh, uh, places from Tucson. They help them with food, clothing, and health care. Panchito. Panchito was in Phoenix, Arizona once, uh, working for many years. She decided to return to Nogales by himself and she decided to stay there to help migrants with phone calls and health care. Okay. 
Santa Cruz County, uh, the Virgin of Guadalupe. Do you know what is the, La Virgen de Guadalupe? This is a very important icon for migrants. This icon is all over the world. Uh, I see there's a lot of people who use it to, to, to feel comfortable, they use it. Virgen de Guadalupe comes from the Catholic religion, but there's a lot of people who are not Catholic and also they have this beautiful icon. There's also a lot of tattoos in people, they have it all over the body. She helps a lot, she helped me a lot too. I have also another icon in, on myself. It's not a tattoo, it's just a, a little stamp that I have. This is a view from Nogales, uh, from Nogales, Sonora. On this side, on the west side of, the, of Nogales, is not owned by cartels, only from the, from the east side. Okay, uh, you can notice some tracks there on the, on the photograph. There are these, uh, the Minute Men, uh, I don't know if you know about those Minute Men, uh, they always try to uh, find migrants so they can give it to the border patrol. Uh, well, I was there and I was taking, taking photos there and they were still there. I also find some minute men when I was walking on the desert in uh, on Arizona. Border patrol always doing their job. Also, when I was on the desert, on the Arizona, when we were walking, we were walking with the Samaritans, I think they have uh, something that they noticed that we were walking and there's always some uh, helicopters looking for us. This is a very special photograph for me. This was the first migrant that, we f that I found, we found Samaritans and I, in the uh, Santa Cruz County. Leonardo. Uh, he was in a very bad uh, situation, no food, no water for two days. I told him that I was from Mexico, I speak Spanish, and I understand his culture, and he didn't want to talk until all the people left, the Samaritan, all Samaritan people, so we talked. And he suddenly showed me this icon, we call them the Santa Muerte. Uh, is the meaning of this is that the, 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 the same death. And they use it because they know that maybe they could die at the desert when they walk. The human repatriation, there's also a human repatriation for women. Uh, this time, uh, this group was separated from, from the man and the child. And, uh, Sometimes they don't like me to take photograph. Sometimes they uh, uh, like to take photograph. Also, there's uh, migrants from other places of the world, like China, Russia, Latin countries, and in Nogales, Sonora. There's different ways they cross the border, uh, like, uh, you know, they use they call them coyotes. In Mexico, we call, we call them polleros. And they always contact these people. We, we people, we photographers call them guys, uh, guy people. Okay. Uh, human repatriation, juvenile people, children also. There's a, a facility in, in Nogales, Sonora from the go uh, state government. I was there. They couldn't take photograph because they're children, but I talked to them a lot, and they always tell me, we feel trapped in this building. We wish somebody can pick it up and leave this place. You know that water? Water is very important in the migrant uh, journey. Uh, they need it. Uh, sometimes they don't know how many days they're gonna walk and they need to bring with them water. It's very important.
Tucson, Arizona. Uh, there's this facility from the state government when they find the bodies, they put it in these places and they wait until somebody picks them up. Also the Consulado of Mexico is uh, working with them so they can find families in Mexico and in the United States. Another important icon for, for migrants, we call them, they call them Malverde. This icon is from the cartel from Sinaloa. They always use it because also they need to be safe from the cartels in their journey to between Mexico and United States. And uh, they also have a lot of photos, tattoos in them. And uh, uh, this, this person I found in Hermosillo, I'm from Hermosillo, Sonora. There's also a lot of migrants in Hermosillo and Comedores there. Always a train, waiting for the train to go to the border. Altar Sonora. Altar Sonora is on the border with Sasabe. This is a very important city where the uh, migrants from Mexico and south, uh, south of Mexico and another countries from, the, from Latin countries be there. And they always have this, this church that they're always there uh, praying for the safety journey to the, to the border and to the United States. There's always objects, I always find objects, pants, clothes, water, food, everything. You can find everything there. Dreamers. This is a very important uh, part of the project. This Dulce Matu, she's an undocumented uh, dreamer. She lives in Phoenix now. She was chosen by the Time Magazine uh, 2012. She was a leader uh, chosen by them, and uh, she was undocumented in that year. Now she's married uh, with a Mexican-American uh, young man, and uh, she's pregnant. And this is a very controversial story. He, she's married with a man who works in a fabric who makes uh, these uh, machines drones. So this is a difference between a dreamer, who is she's a leader who helped dreamers to become uh, a resident for the United States, and this guy who's making uh, drones for the border. Uh, my world, in my world there's no borders. But when I realized that this is not the norm, I become involved. Thank you very much for being here.